couldn't do it. Tupac's third album had just gone platinum. Yeah, he was rotting away in jail. Suge Knight saw an opportunity and he seized it. I said, Suge, we need to get Pac on death row. He need to be here with us. When he got him, David Kendall went and got him out of there, untangled him, put him in the studio as soon as he got out. It took Suge Knight $1.4 million and a two page contract to make Tupac a free man. That contract called for Tupac to deliver three albums to death row. I called a lot of people actually, but the only person that came to my aid was Suge Knight. I was like, yo, I'm telling you, death row is the bomb and everything. But I promise you, if you get me out of jail and you put me on death row, I will take death row to a level where it's never even thought about being on. And I promise you that. Pac's entire life was searching for a father figure and a family. Death row and Shug Knight became the family for him. If you look at Pac's whole life, those things are constant. Father figure, need for family, need for belonging to something. So now I'm going to represent the West Coast. I'm going to ride for the West Coast. I'm going to ride for death row. For the black community especially, we have like broken families with no father, no big brothers. And so the, the music becomes the big brother and or, or the music becomes the father. As a young man, you know, with no father in the home, it was, it was extremely hard. Criminals, they just, they the only people that cared about me at that point. And what was that like to have a mother who was addicted to crack? I love my mom, she the bond to me, so. I, I know she is now, mistakes. but what about men? It was hard, it was hard, because, you know, she was my hero. This is somebody who hasn't had a real family, and if they were offering him one, I think that he made a decision, partly because of that. When Tupac made the decision to go to death row, we were like, right on. We did pretty much everything together. It was definitely more like family to me. Love is the most important thing. I just want to be part of a family. Death Row at that time, it was so beautiful because it was so many talented people in any given field, whether they be musicians, session players, other rappers, singers, producers, like being at the school for the X-Men. It was like a playground for us. When you walk in, you see DJ Quick over here, you see Snoop over there, Nate Dogg there. All these amazing musicians and singers and rappers all at your disposal. Should create an environment that was like the Motown of hip hop. After he was released from prison, Tupac got back to it right away. He went right back in the studio, and that wasn't surprising to us. His work ethic was after he was released from prison. Tupac got back to it right away. He went right back in the studio. That wasn't surprising to us. His work ethic was what it was before he got to death row. We were selling millions of records, but when he went to death row, they multiplied that three or four times. Ultimately, from a music standpoint and from a record sales standpoint, it was a great decision. Tupac burned through his three album commitment to death row in a matter of months. As far as Tupac was concerned, his debt to Suge Knight was paid, and he was looking forward to starting his own record label, Machiavelli Records. I'm the type of that gotta have my own. I got to hustle for my own. And any man out there got to feel me. It ain't about milking off the next man. That's a oh, I'm yeah, I'm finna come up on my own. I'm gonna get my own sack. I don't want to be nobody's worker all my life. I want my own low. Death Row really, really, really needed Tupac. There was pressure because the artists were not bringing out hits. Dre was just not involved anymore. The Dog Pound were getting quite upset because they were having to do a lot of the production themselves. Snoop refused to record, so it was a very stressful time. Tupac certainly needed them to bail him out, but Tupac bailed them out, gave them a revived commercial presence. They understood that this man was just a money maker. A week before Tupac's death, he fired David Ketter and people said publicly, that's gonna get him killed. Because Suge had appointed Ketter to run Tupac's business. And that was when Suge he had this accountant, Steve Cantrock, who was working with him to cook the books. Suge tried to hide the money he owed Tupac. His claim was, you know, I, I paid that out to you and your family and hotel bills and meals and that, you know, you, you've gotten that money, but the numbers don't add up. Suge owed Tupac a lot of money. He spent the last three weeks of his life on a one-note crusade. Suge, I want to see an accounting of my money. And that's basically where Tupac was at the time that he died.